Hey, good morning guys, gals, Steve-O here. Did you get your hike in this morning? What? Excuse me? What did you say? You didn't? You were, you were, you were laying in bed. No, no, that's not, no, 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 no. Well, I want you up at 4 a.m., okay, go out there, and the first thing you do is have a little lacto, your homemade lacto and uh, your artery cleaner and if you don't know how that artery, artery cleaner works uh, let me know I'll explain that in another video but get that in you and then fire up the old bun coffee maker and have you a couple cups of coffee and while you're watching YouTube okay and uh, before daybreak you want to get your breakfast and, and no I no pancakes I don't want you doing the pancakes and, and French toast and all that sweet stuff. No, get you some eggs, organic eggs from your from your chicken tractor that's in your backyard, and uh, have some sausage if you like or whatever. And uh, no toast. No, that's gluten. No, uh-uh. Okay, we're going holistic approach here. All right. Uh, yeah. You ain't getting no younger. You're like old Steve. Oh, you ain't getting no younger. So you got to get all the mileage we can get. Now, I want you to do, after that, daybreak, go out and get your chickens fed and get any watering on your garden done. And then right at daybreak, right at the crack of day, you want to hit the hit the road, get your hiking shoes on, get out there and knock out that two-mile hike minimal. Now, if you can go three, four, or five miles, that's better. Oh, uh, see. And that'll keep you going. All right, and we're going to keep the bees going, too. That's enough schooling on your uh, holistic approach there. Uh, now, let's give you a holistic approach on the honeybees. All right, let me spin around and get my little holster here, and I can tune you up on uh, some of the things. Now, this one I'm going to show you. I never had to do this in the 60s at all. I just, I just made honey. That's all I did. Move bees around, make honey. Never did any of this. This is all new stuff, and it's kind of new for me, too, because these pests that have come in, your varroa, uh, your tracheal mites, and, and, and all the other stuff that's going on, uh, never was back in the day when I first started beekeeping. But nowadays, we have to shift gears. So some of this stuff I'm going to show you, it's out there on YouTube, and it's going to be a, maybe a repeat, but for some of you guys just getting in it, uh, you know, this, this may be a... Uh, you know, learning uh, deal for you. So let me let me show you what I got. What I got here, what I got here in this wide mouth quart jar, this white st stuff here. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. What I've got in here, you get your blender. Just get a get a blender, a cheap blender, and don't use it for anything else. Just keep it for if you're going to be in bees. Keep that blender designated for mixing up this essential oils. And what I've got, you put one cup in your blender, and then you dump in two teaspoons. Write this on your cap so you don't forget it. Two teaspoons of tea tree oil, one teaspoon of wintergreen oil and three drops of lemongrass oil in that blender. Now you want to spin that up for five minutes. Okay, you're making a concentrate. Now at the end of five minutes, dump it in this quart jar. Now you'll notice this jar, I've got four segments on it. There's a cup. Each one's a cup. All right. So after you've dumped that one cup in your jar, Put more water in your blender and spin it a few minutes and then top out this jar clear to the top with water. Add more water to your blender, spin it up just to kind of clean it out and fill it up. Then pour that into this jar and shake it up. Now I've already taken two cups out here. I've got two more feeding. Each line represents, there's four cups in here, so each cup you add to one gallon of sugar water. In this sugar water, I put like four pounds, half the, half the bottle. And uh, another neat thing I came up with on these caps, 
you can take a knife and cut this cap out. Take two of these caps. I'm always buying distilled water for my different things that I do. Cut two of these caps out. The hole, just here. And you're leaving this little lip here. Alright? So now you got two. Take you got a you got a female here that's going on this male. Alright. So what you're creating is a double thing. And you're gonna go and rough this up with a knife, this edge here. Get you some JB weld and put two of these together with JB weld. So you gotta have a female over here and a female over here. Now take another jug, cut it in half. And let this, when you JB this together, set it aside for 24 hours. You come back. Now you've got an adapter that you can pop on here. Take this other half jug, stick on here. Now you've got a funnel that ain't falling all over the place and you're spilling sugar all over the counter and all that nonsense. Now you can pour it in and pour your sugar up halfway on this jug with the hottest tap water you can get. Now you can use city water with chlorine in it. It don't matter. Uh, for the bee treatment. Uh, I don't because I have mono well. I don't have chlorine and fluoride and all that garbage in my water. So you can let it gas off for 24 and then heat the water and then do it. But it, you want hot water and then shake it up. Now to mix this all I do is I shake this up and I've got, see I've got, uh, I'm going to hold my finger here so I know I'm just going to do one line and you pour in one line of this essential oil in here. And what this essential oil is going to do is, is, is knock these mites out of these bees. These bees are going to drink this stuff and this whole hive is going to get saturated with this essential oil. The tea tree oil is good for knocking out fungal, fungal issues in the hive. See, so I've got that in there. Now I've got enough in there for one more. Uh, treatment for one more gallon. Put your lid on and shake this up. Okay. Now you're ready to fill up your jars. I have four beehives over here that I'm going to fill up. They're a quart jar, so I got enough here for four of those. I don't know how much syrup these girls have taken out of this, uh, out of their hives, but. Uh, We'll find out here in a minute. Let me get my smoker fired up. And uh, I'm not going to suit up for this. I don't think there's a need to. Uh, I don't think they'll eat me too bad with just this head net on. I don't like get stung in the eyeballs. So that's why we throw a head net on. And uh, yeah, uh, this coming Friday will be the 26th of May. Um, oh, well, by the way, wish me happy birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. 68 years old. 68 years young. Somebody asked me the other day, how long do you want to live? You know, you're always into Steve this enlistic garbage, they said. I said, I don't know. Uh, how long did how long did Noah live? And they said what? <clears throat> yeah, I said how long did Noah live? And they said I think the I think he lived 950 years. I said well, what's wrong with that? You know, you're feeling good, like Steve-O is every day. Why not go the whole you know seven, 950 years? You know, and they just look at me like. Oh man, bro, you, you're you really losing it, bro. Anyway, I have fun with them. Now let's see what's in here. These, I really stretched these hives when I made these things up. I have no clue. And I'm not, I'm not going to dig into any hive. Like I tell you guys, don't be fooling around in these hives for, until 30 days is up. Don't be in there goofing around because you could screw these, these queens to fly out. At the end of 30 days, usually 99% of the time, if they've made it and come back, successful mating, they've usually settled into good laying, you know, they're locked into some good laying stuff going on. 
So, yeah, these guys, you know, these bees look calm. I'm going to say that there's a queen in here. Usually they're really testy. If you, if, There's no queen. They're upset. They, they're dying. They're going to be, the whole hive's going to be collapsing soon. They're not happy. These guys are all laid, out, laid back here. I'm going to say there's a queen in this thing. But I'm going to carry you guys along with me. Uh, next Friday, I think it is, is the 26th. So I'll, I'll drag you guys along with me. And uh, we'll open these up. And I think what I'm going to do is haul some of these bees um, out of here. And haul back and, and put in the swamp. I've got the swamp hive stand. i got four of them in now over at my uh, at base camp. And I think what I will do is... Uh, Let's put some of these in the swamp. Let's look in this one. Yes. This hive here, this stacked up thing here. And I got I got bees all the way good, all the way to the top. This guy looked really weak here. I mean this thing here, it may be toast. I don't know. We'll see. Like I told you, I, I really stretched these bees out when I made these out get up and I didn't have a lot of good seal brood to go with uh, as much as I wanted but you never know you, you know we, we could uh, we could have a success story here like I said I'll bring you along next Friday if it's not raining we'll have to see you check our weather see how crazy that is and uh, See now, this isn't good. This this has been this should this jar should be empty if this thing was really going good. Yeah, there's bees in it. We got bees in here, but it looks weak, yeah. and it could be a failure. You know, we'll know. We'll know. But what we'll do, all this equipment should still be in good shape. I mean, not ate up. I mean, by good shape, not eaten up with wax moth. Because once these bees are not protecting this equipment, uh, the wax moths will come in and just start ripping the whole place apart. And 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 what they're after is pollen residues. Uh, um, the the skins on the cocoons after the bee after the bee hatches, you'll have a cocoon in there, and the bees clean it out that cell and get it prepped for the queen to come in and lay lay eggs. Now see here's another one. This is not completely sucked dry but we've got quite a few bees here. So yeah we might have a queen in here. I'll usually run 80% uh, 85% so you know success rate on these nukes. So that's not bad. And it's no big deal if they fail not a big deal you're going to take all this equipment that doesn't have you know a queen in it after 30 days if it looks good and strong i may come leave it and come back in another five days and at that point in time if it's still no queen laying eggs in here i'm just going to shake all the bees here on the ground and then i'm going to salvage that equipment i may add another super to say which this one or that one over there and then take these frames that failed and put on that because it's already they're already drawn out see and uh yeah so that's done nobody's pissed off i didn't get stung here and that's always good so uh, yeah we'll come back i'll bring you guys along we'll open these up we're going to open up the other bees at the other yard where i have the mean twisted sisters and we'll get into those and see how ugly that deal is and uh, yeah we'll go from there so uh, i will catch you guys on the next one uh have a good day and uh, always be happy i'll see you next friday bye bye